Six months later. Needless to say, a lot has happened. I bought a house, my YouTube channel has skyrocketed, I interviewed Timon Smectala, EA tweeted one of the hottest takes in 2022 and got flamed for it only to pathetically backtrack it a day later. Dying Light 2 also sold over 5 million copies, had huge monthly updates and patches, and is also apparently worth more than the entirety of CDPR. A photo mode was added, new chapters were added, my wife left me. Hey, how's your girl, man? Uh, she left me. Oh. But I got the van. It's nice. Yeah, right? And now today we're going to discuss Dying Light 2. Is everything heading in the right direction? Are gamers putting their copies of Dying Light 2 into the Target trash cans because they are finally fed up? Should we be excited about what's to come? What could potentially be coming? And lastly, what does the community even want to have? In the past, we have discussed numerous ways to improve the current state of the game while providing lots of suggestions and recommendations to which some of them Techland has actually implemented. The need for more endgame content was highest on the list, and players were given New Game Plus, Photo Mode, the Footsteps of the Night Runner, and more community events such as the Bloody Summer event, Long Nights, and Blue Moon. I do have to say, some of the events in Dying Light 2 so far have been a hit or miss. Bloody Summer event was a ton of fun. I expressed my interest on Twitter that this should be permanent. All my Dying Light 2 fans agreed with me, while the people who follow me from high school, they view me as a psychopath, gushing over by my love of limbs flying everywhere, finally confirming their suspicions that the quiet kid in the back is a serial killer. Long Nights, cool concept, but the reward wasn't much of importance. Two tokens for event participation seems a little lackluster and underwhelming. Previous events were giving out outfits and cosmetics, which is always a bonus for the player. Getting new drip and looking awesome is some of the best ways to increase your game's longevity. But this is also an issue because at this point, this game doesn't currently have a transmog system implemented into it. For the past six months, this game has been undergoing a lot of changes. Some right in front of our eyes, some hidden in the background. Team is working behind the scenes to get this up to par and start exceeding expectations. Certain examples include cutscenes being reworked, such as the one with Ro. It's now a little bit more alive. <laughs> Ow, that fucking hurt. And a lot of quote unquote shadow updates are making its way into Dying Light 2 to go and make it a better game, update the quality of life, you know, yada yada yada. To put it simply, the Dying Light 2 that you played in February is not the same game. When it launched, it was not a complete game and was like that for a month or two. Afterwards, they started to fix it, start working towards building a solid foundation for what the future holds. And after the latest update with the In the Footsteps of a Night Runner, I believe that they have finally achieved the current state of the game for something great to come. We have a nice foundation, finally built right here. And now they can make more engaging and meaningful content on top of that. Take all that stuff and shove it right into Dying Light 2. With the game going on sale so often, I do think now is a great time to start getting into it. Especially as of now, the game is in a much better state than when it launched. Very recently, a whole lot of old and cut content has been found. That shit has been reappearing in the game files like crazy. It was data mined that dual wield medieval shields are now coming into this game. And now this begs me to one of my first questions. Will this old cut content be making its way into Dying Light 2? And I know that a lot of you don't like the phrase cut content, but here's the thing, it's my video. You're wrong, plus ratio, plus L, plus F to pay respects, plus get out of here, plus get out of my DMs, get out of my mentions, you're yeah. done. This video will be uploaded in early August, which means DLC 1 is coming. It's coming next month, actually. What does the first DLC hold? Now that the DLC is delayed, it will be held up to a higher expectation. And this will be one of their first opportunities to grab any players that may have abandoned it. So what exactly do we know? Grab a drink and let's begin. But first, a message from our sponsor, Age of Origins. Now, Age of Origins is a tower defense strategy mobile game that you fight against zombies. So you, yes, you, the player, you act as a commander, building, fighting zombies, and finding your place in a doomsday world. And don't worry, it's not that doomsday. As you play, you will expand your city, slowly rebuilding every key area, building up a suitable army for any potential foe. And as time goes on, you will watch your city transform into something greater and give you that feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment. You can also have 
Lucy, an infector who can control zombie troops known as biochemical zombies. And you can also give her flowers too. But don't forget about the officers. I mean, look at these chads. Very unique with their own separate special skills. And lastly, you have Titan. You can take either Genshin or Impress onto the battlefield to assist you with damage to enemies. I mean, look at this. Absolute chaos in front of our eyes. But friends, remember, Age of Origins, tower defense game. The more you play, the crazier this game gets. In the later levels, it gets hectic. They also have giant cannon defense, which is incredible. You sit in your low seat and you tear through monsters like the little pieces of paper. The world map is also huge with lots to do. There are many crises going on in the world, and you need to be careful with enemy invasions. There are many worldwide battles with players from different worlds and planets, and you can just have fun with them. If you thought the tower defense was chaotic, wait until you go and try out that PvP. All of this is to go and fit that theme of Doomsday. But friends, click the link in the description. You can also enjoy an exclusive gift pack worth $60 if you click that link down below. Age of Origins, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And now, let's begin. In an interview with Timon Smectala, he said that the first DLC will be able to be played after the prologue and before the epilogue. It is a parallel story that happens during the main story. You'll play some new missions on the main map, and then you'll venture to a new area that is completely new. And now we're going to start to lean in from confirmed information to leaked information. Very recently, it was added into the Steam store two more files, Data DLC 1 and Data DLC 2. They were added into the long list of already available DLCs for Dying Light 2 Stay Human. This all makes sense that Techland is starting to gear up the game for the next DLC. According to their new roadmap, DLC 1 will be coming at some point from September to November. Another Twitter post from them on May 12th confirms its arrival in September, which is hopefully still the case, it's unknown at this time, but I'm leaning towards it is. But now, leaked information time. What do we know? If you dig deeper, like really, really deep, you'll see subtle changes to the file structure prepping up this game for the first DLC, or so we believe. For the past month, data miners have been obliterating every single aspect of this game's data in order to figure out what could potentially be coming. Data miner Bub has played a massive role in recovering this data, piecing it together and building together the potential story DLC known as Opera. And while I won't bore you with the complete breakdown and detailed analysis of it, here's a little gist of it. It takes place at a new location called Opera House, which is massive. When comparing it to other structures and characters, you can see exactly how big this thing is. The main theme of this DLC is a gladiator style event that introduces an arena where you can battle different enemies, champions, and more in a series of both parkour and a series of both parkour and combat challenges. The DLC is very story driven and currently has two different endings. On top of this, tons of new 3D models and NPCs are being added. There are also thousands of pieces of new dialogue and much, much more coming this way. Regardless of whether or not this leak is true, this is a story DLC no matter what. That is a fact. New story, new missions, new chapters are coming. So. Let's begin. When you look back at the vanilla version of the game, it suffers from plenty of problems. It was universally agreed that the story was a little lackluster and didn't offer up something that was compelling. The story contained too many cliches, it had a solid build up to the broadcast mission, but after that it kind of fell apart. From this point to the end, it goes by so quick like that dude who speeds to 200 miles per hour on the highway while listening to Darude Sandstorm. It was also agreed that humans took more of a forefront role in this game while the infected took a backseat. Previous DLCs from other games, especially the following, were so successful because they leaned into the crazy, they leaned into the horror and mystery vibe, rather than generic faction wars. The success in what worked in the following should have been repeated in the sequel. I know we say time and time again, but I do think it is time to introduce Sentinel Volatiles into this game. It would one, make for a much more compelling story arc. Just the thought of it is so much more interesting than a military versus survivor faction war. Like imagine if they just replaced Lawan with a rogue volatile that wants to take down Waltz for conducting horrible experiments on them. And then your volatile friend is trying to convince you the whole time to embrace your infection to get you your superhuman abilities. I know, I'm spitballing, but you can't say at the very least that you're not interested in that. Imagine fighting side by side with a volatile. What about side by side with a friend? You have so much material to work with here and you're not constrained to something generic. So overall, I am both excited and kind of worried for the first story DLC. Is it going to be something meaningful or lackluster again? Now that they delayed the first DLC, it will be held up to a higher expectation. But can they deliver? 
every single month so far since release i've done a dying light 2 review this is my sixth monthly review and my eighth overall review i've seen this game go through so much over this time we as a community have given techland lots of recommendations and suggestions on what to do in order to make dying light 2 an even better game to quickly recap all of the suggestions and feedback from the previous month this is what we have discussed some of these suggestions have already made its way into Dying Light 2, I just want to bring them back up in order to re-spark discussion. So out of all of our reviews, here's what has been added to the game. New Game Plus was added, a walking button, we also got a no HUD and dynamic HUD options. We gave a bigger role to the Volatiles and Banshees, granted what we wanted was for them to be free roaming around, but they were added into New Game Plus, they still do need work, but it is a step in the right direction. We got some end game content with Into the Footsteps of a Night Runner. This also helped make the open world more engaging with new activities. So out of everything we just said right there, that is recommendations and suggestions from us, me and you, the community. Everything that I just went over, those changes, those recommendations are from our reviews. Then we also have the opposite side where requested feedback and recommendations haven't made its way into the game just yet. Requested feedback that I've seen from the community. Everything that I'm about to say, the community has been requesting for at least six months now. And there are many important things that people who are going to be buying this game around the six month mark would wanna know before getting into it. Number one, a Night Runner mode, currently an ultra hard difficulty survivor mode, does not exist in the sequel. Number two, Transmog, there's currently no way to get your drip and awesome stats at the same time. Introducing a Transmog system would allow that. Number three, more NPC models. Right now, there are a lot of repeating NPCs in the open world, and you will notice it. Trust me, we all know about Gerard. Reworking the safe houses and the fisheye canteen, currently they serve no function post-launch aside from getting a UV light and also sleeping. Reworking the GRE facilities and metro stations to make them more unique and different. Number six, co-op challenges. Dying Light 1 actually had more opportunities to do cooperative play at launch, while Dying Light 2 does not. Your traditional four-player co-op is in Dying Light 2, but little things like pausing the game, setting a waypoint, and racing your friends, that's not in the sequel. It was in the original, it's not here though. Number seven, more enemy variety. This also includes the infected. While the high volatile was a step in the right direction, they need to go bigger and up the ante for it. Make things more haunting, give special infected new abilities, new things to do, have fun with it. Number eight, expand photo mode with smiles and more poses. Number nine, which is probably one of the most requested features that I constantly see in the community, lighting and atmosphere changes. Everyone keeps talking about how they want to see that crisp E3 2019 lighting. Tech one, if you're able to try to make it happen, it is confirmed that we are going to a new area for this DLC. Maybe play it around with that area. Maybe go and test it out over there. Test out the lighting in that section. Play around with it. You can make this area a test run, change up the lighting in the opera house to closely resemble what we saw in E3 and see what the community says. Number 10, guns and throwable weapons returning. This is something that I constantly see almost every single day in the community. Check their Twitter replies on every single Dying Light 2 post. People are constantly asking for guns and throwable weapons to return. Number 11, Techland GG quests. Although it does seem like they are gearing up for this, this is something that's gonna be coming over time, just throwing it out there again. And lastly, multiplayer content. One big game mode that the community has been requesting for the longest time is a battle royale. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, Danny. Danny, I'm kidding. Toys in the trash. Please don't fucking do that. <laughs> don't, don't think about it. Don't, hey. I'm the hey, trash hey. man. But a game mode that the community has been wanting for the longest time, and Timon actually spoke about it on Twitter, was Tag. And what better way to discuss this tag game mode than inviting the voice actor for Aiden Caldwell from Dying Light 2 onto this channel to discuss his thoughts about this potential game mode. Jonas Scott, take it away, please. Hello again, guys. Uh, it's me, Jonas Scott. Just like Oni said, I voice Aiden Caldwell in Dying Light 2. And I want to make this very clear. This isn't me as a, as a shill for Techland. I wasn't paid to come here. This is non-sponsored content. This is just me as a fan doing my pal Oni a favor and giving a platform for something that I thought was a really cool idea since the game was in beta. And that is a tag game mode. Now, 
If you've ever watched professional tag being played, yes, it does exist. I know it sounds a little weird in context, but if you've ever watched professional tag being played, it almost looks like they are doing parkour on a motion capture stage. There are very bare bones things that will equivalent, you know, equivalent to like trampolines. Uh, there's uh, tiny little hurdles for them to go over. There are bars for them to swing on. There are tables for them to dodge under and things for them to slide on. Um, it's very motion oriented and it almost feels like professional parkour, but with a few other rules. Now, professional tag setup, right? But there's a skin of the zombie apocalypse on it. You know, you have tables to slide under, things to to, to swing on, uh, poles to, to vault down. But instead of having this tiny little 10 by 10 area, they've built an entire jungle gym that's a city that has dozens of stories, that has elevation, that has paragliders, that has an immense amount of content that is designed for movement. The scariest part of Dying Light, in my opinion, is being chased. Your heart was pumping every time you got chased by someone who was smarter than you, faster than you, a volatile, right? Somebody who knew what you were going to do, could predict your movements, could tell where you were going to slide, where you're going to dodge, could head you off at passes, things like that, right? They were smart. What about putting that in the hands of a person? Yeah? Now, in Be the Zombie, asymmetrical gameplay, you kind of had that, right? The zombie was faster than you, was smarter than you, had better skills than you, but you had things that you could, you know, back yourselves up with. Um, they were afraid of UV lights, you know, you could fight them off with weapons and things like that. You would have similar skills to everybody, a night runner skill set. You could jump pretty far, you had a full stamina bar, you know, and you, you would all be placed, maybe 10 of you, five of you, depending on resources. Um, you would be placed in the city or a portion of the city. Um, and your objective as the tagger would be to go and tag people. Maybe give someone, give them something comical. Give them a frying pan to hit people with. I, I don't know. Give them, give them a last hope to hit people with. Give them a rubber ducky, whatever. Dev weapons. There's plenty of those. But you would go up, you would, you would find people on your compass and your minimap, and you would go and slap them. And they would turn into the tagger themselves, and then you would have to run away. Um, they would be available. You could see where everybody was. This isn't hide and seek. This is tag, right? You'd be able to see where people are. So you would, you, you would run away from the tagger as much as you could. You would try and you would try and throw them off your trail. You would try and make it so that you can't, they can't tell where you're going, right? Maybe there are certain power-ups for the runners and the tagger themselves. You could get a double jump. You could get something you don't see normally in the game. You could get some volatile power. You could get a leap. You could get a, 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 a dodge. You could get one free tag, you know, uh, one free life or something like that. You can't be tagged once. Um, there are myriads of just gameplay tweaks, tiny little things that you could add to make it incredibly competitive. And because it's standardized, everybody could just drop in. You'd drop in, you'd have max stamina. You'd drop in, you'd have, you know, everything you need to make it a level playing field with these tiny little power-ups around that could give you an edge. Um, you could wall run for an indefinite period, you know, just things like that. You can think of it. You can theory craft it. You get what I'm saying. I think it's a fantastic idea. Being chased by somebody, and we all agree that, you know, sometimes the volatiles in the game could be scarier, right? But what's scarier than being chased by somebody who knows exactly what they're doing? What's more terrifying than hearing the footsteps of somebody right behind you, right? Who knows what you're doing? Maybe there's VOIP and they're yelling at you and they're talking to you. I'm gonna get you, I got you, right? Maybe there's a power up where you can see where footsteps are. You can see trails of footsteps so you can know where people have been. You can know where they're gonna hide. You can know where they've been, you know, if they jumped out of a window and immediately went left, you can tell that they're doing that. There are just, there's a myriad possibilities. Techland, please, if you need help, I'm here. I can talk, the, the community is here to help you move this forward. Put out a survey, put out a tiny little test, Whatever you want. I know you guys got your hands full with a bunch of other things, including DLC, but consider this. I'm always available. I love you guys, and I love Tag, and I love Dying Light too. Thanks for listening, and uh, take it away, Oni. But friends, that is everything that I have to say about Dying Light 2 Stay Human. What Techland has built over the past few months is a solid foundation of something great coming in their future. But I know, the big question, should you buy it? In my personal opinion, now that the game is constantly going on sale for 30 to 40% off, and you can probably swing it and grab it at 30 to 40 bucks, I think it's definitely worth it. I mean, people bought Battlefield 2042 at launch, and uh, look how it worked out for them. And also Marvel Avengers.
But now I want to hear what you have to say. Are you excited for the first DLC? What are some requests that you want to be in Dying Light 2? We went over a massive list. Let's go and add on to that list. This is the perfect time for you to go down below, comment so I can manipulate myself in the algorithm, push my video even higher. It's great. If you keep doing this, I can make more money and I can I can buy another house. Oh, and by the way, I, I bought, bought a house. house. But also, by the way, you can watch more of my content right here.